Hey guys, uh, Waste Potential 616 back again uh, with another video for you. Got lots of comics to talk about, but um, I'll do them in little separate videos. Um, for the moment, I want to talk about two uh, Siege related uh, books that came out. Okay, starting with. Oh, and I do want to talk about a trade as well, but I'll go into that later. Right, um, Dark Wolverine 82. Okay, this is good. This is very good. Um, the last Dark Wolverine arc, I didn't think was that great. It was okay, but it wasn't as good as the previous one. Um, now, as I said, this is related to the Siege uh, event. Um, and of course, uh, following Wolverine. Uh, Dakin, Dark Wolverine. Um, starts off... Um, you know, him with, the t with some troops. Um, he's, he kind of scares the shit out of one of them, but he just, he just messes with him psych uh, psychologically, and then this is one of the good things about the book, this is what uh, differentiates him from Wolverine, uh, his father Logan, uh, he is his own character, he's manipula manipulative, and sly, and just, you know, cruel, he seems to enjoy other people's suffering, a bit of a sadist, um, and uh, yeah, he just sat with one of the troops, and also um, with um, with Hawkeye slash Bullseye. Um, and it's been established that they have kind of a rocky uh, relationship. Him also using this kind of he's you know he's a bit bisexual, uh, dark Wolverine, uh, sort of freak people out, you know, intimidate them. But um, and uh, it's his interaction with the other Dark Avengers. Is, is is interesting, um, you know how he's a t how he interacts with the team. It's very good. Um, anyway, and also uh, it seems we have um, uh, I don't know who they are. Would they be the Furies? Um, anyway, yeah, I, I think they're the Furies. Three magical women sort of uh, you know spying on him and saying that he might be the bringer of uh, Ragnarok. So. Possibly playing a very big role in the siege event it's, itself. Um, now, yeah, we've got a little bit of action here. I mean, it, towards the end, it, you actually see them, him fighting with our Scarians. There's a nice splash page here. Um, is it, can you kind of make that? Yeah, you've got Venom in the background. He's got some hands getting chopped off. Nice. Um, this, uh, the art, I, I do like the artist. It's a, it's a cartoonish kind of style. It's a kind of grittiness to it, but it's it, really nice composition. Uh, I can have problems pronouncing this name. Uh, Giuseppe uh, Camon Colli, But anyway, yeah, I like his style. It's good. Um, kind of sketchy and it's slightly cartoony, but um, it's a really nice composition. I really like this page. Yeah, you know, he, he just uses he uses pages and panels and in in different ways it's good, it's cool. Um, the uh, the writing team of uh, Wei and Lu are doing a good job as well. It's the character of Dakin himself, um, just the way he manipulates people, the way he interacts, and you never really know whose side he's on, what exactly his motivations. It's interesting, you know. Um, I mean, there's a there's a point where he's about to. It looks like he's going to betray the team um, to like an ogre or something. Uh, but in the end, that uh, ogre gets his uh, head uh, blown off. And um, which, um, after um, Osborn saying to uh, Dakin, uh, "This isn't a game," uh, he says, "Oh, uh, war is the ultimate game," and uh, kicks that ogre's uh, head like a football, which I thought was pretty cool. Or oh, soccer ball. Anyway. I'm not going to ruin it, but something happens in here, which I, I'm really surprised by. It's quite a big thing that Dakin does, and I'm not sure how they're going to actually incorporate this into the Siege um, miniseries itself. So, something quite big happens here, but um, we'll see. But yeah, this is exciting stuff. Um, you know, better than the uh, Siege number one, I'd say. Um, but yeah, well worth a read. If you enjoyed the first arc of uh, Dark Wolverine, where Dakin was sort of introduced, and you didn't enjoy the second one so much, this is time to jump back on board. This is good stuff. Okay, I really should be keeping an eye on the time. Probably have to redo this video. Oh, well, um, Dark Avengers issue 13. Okay, this is century-centric 
issue. Um, okay, first off, artwork. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Mike Diodato. Very good stuff. Uh, sort of photo realistic, but there's a dark kind of grittiness to it. Um, and yeah, I'd say this is almost worth it just for the artwork. It's really, really good stuff. Um, now the story. Okay, this picks up on where um, his wife, uh, Sentry's wife, shot him in the face, and it sort of, you know, he saw his sort of all skeletal, ended on the cliffhanger, and then wasn't touched upon, which kind of pissed me off, and I think quite a lot of other people. But this is picking straight up from that. And uh, we get kind of an insight into uh, the Sentry's origin about how he was a drug user, and that's the real reason why he took this formula, and, um, you yeah. know. That has already been touched upon in, um, there was a maxi series, a 12 issue maxi series by uh, Paul Jenkins. Um, not the original Century miniseries, but there's a nice one. And as was already said, he was a, a drug addict. Um, but it goes into a bit more detail. Um, and it's good, you know, but because I've already read that maxi series, like, it's not that huge of a revelation for me because I kind of knew that, but it goes into more detail. Um, and Lindy sort of describes how, you know, he shouldn't have been a hero, shouldn't have been gone to palace, you know. And it just sort of shows his, his you know, this conflict within him, between, you know, Sentry and the Void, how he's the same person, you know, it's, the Void sort of taking over him a little bit. And uh, the Sentry sort of goes off into the sun to try and kill himself, but it looks like the Void's going to take over. Um, you know, this cool in a conflict, you know, and it's, you know, it, 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 it's alright, um, I just, I feel like this has already been touched upon before, as I said, um, like in the, the uh, Century Maxi series, um, which written by Paul Jenkins and illustrated by John Romita's Jr., it was, it was a good series, it kind of dipped and turned, and the revelations it was trying to do about the Century, some kind of fell a bit flat, and you've still left with questions, you know, they didn't seem to be answered fully. So hopefully in the storyline, um, it, you know, it will be touched upon. Um, you know, everything will be sort of revealed. Um, so I'm hopeful. I'm just, oh, brilliant. Oh, look at he's burning alive in the sun. Um, yeah, that's really good. Um, my only problem with this is Lind uh, his wife, Lindy, um, she's sort of saying, oh, you know, you're not really a hero and blah, 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 and all this. Um, and I can understand what they're trying to do with that, you know, sort of, he, this is what happens when a normal person is too much power, also a weak person, or a junkie, you know, um, I still think he could have the capacity to hear it. The reason why this, that kind of bothered me, because the, the point's really forced, for, you know, forced, is that in the original Century series, okay, um, it, you, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I think I'm running out of time. But you s still get a sense that the Sentry was a hero. You know, he made a sacrifice. He made everyone forget about him because he knew the, the problems of the Void. And despite his flaws, there's still a part of him that is a legitimate hero and does uh, heroic things. And I, that's missing from this. It's an aspect of the character which is missing. And I know what they're trying to do, but I still think it needs to be faithful. To this. Now I know I'm pretty well out of time, so um, let's just. I'm not going to review this, I'm just going to say this is really worth picking up. If you have any interest in the Century, this is the title, this is the book to pick up. The original Century miniseries. And it had sort of kind of one shots, which were basically part of the series where he sort of interacted with Marvel heroes in the past and how he affected them. And that really shows his heroic side, because especially if there's uh, one with the X Men where he kind of inspires. Angel helps him to become a hero you know, early on in his career, uh, and uh, I mean the majority of it's illustrated by Jay Lee, and the artwork's pretty, oh well I could just oh, any page I don't know, just beautiful, beautiful artwork, really good stuff. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in the century, to pick this up. I'll probably try to give give this a proper review later. Anyway, hopefully I haven't run out of time, waste potential. Look after yourselves, guys.